A pleasant good evening to you all from the Danbury Ice Arena. I'm Chris Lynch with the hat tricks about set to take on the Elmira Mammoth. It's a preview of a possible postseason matchup. The Danbury hat tricks in first place in the Empire Division, 36 and 5. Elmira in fourth, a 12, 24, and 5. Same number of overtime or shootout losses. Part of the reason for that record for the hat tricks is they have been excellent against the Mammoth five times. These teams have met up throughout the course of the season and five times the Danbury hat tricks have come away victorious. A very good night and a good time for the hat tricks to be facing the Mammoth as they're looking to try and build some cushion in the standings. Binghamton, the loss against the Mississippi Seawolves on Wednesday, so that adds a little bit of room for the Danbury Hat Tricks to work with. A busy night across the FPHL. It's one of the first games that'll be taking place. Port Huron is in Delaware. Carolina is in Motor City. Binghamton is in Columbus. All of those games getting started at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Watertown facing Mississippi, that is at 8.05 Eastern, 7.05 Central Standard Time. And all of the Hattricks fans will be keeping an eye on that Binghamton-Columbus game. What should be a meaningful matchup as far as figuring out the implications for the standings. Columbus at 31, 6, and 3. 90 points. Danbury is only two points behind the River Dragons for that top spot in the FPHL overall. So do you hope for Binghamton to come up with a good win and gain points on you? Or do you hope for a Binghamton victory so that you might be able to jump Columbus? It leads to some interesting standings complexities. As far as the players who will be taking to the ice, Brian Wilson, a fabulous, fabulous month of February, performed well up to and well beyond standards. He reaches the Goaltender of the Month Award for the second time this season. He also got it for the very first month of the year, October slash November. Seven games that Wilson played throughout the course of the month of February posted a 925 saves percentage and 266 goals against average. Led the team to a 5-1-0-1 record across the course of those games. He even got a call up to the AHL, went up to the Belleville Senators of the AHL when they were down over in Bridgeport taking on the uh, Bridgeport Islanders. I still think of them as the Sound Tigers, but Brian Wilson has been pretty indisputably the most valuable player for the Danbury Hattricks, other than possibly Johnny Ruiz, but Wilson leads the league in save percentage and wins and minutes played and has been one of the most stable and consistent players at his position, uh, for any position across the entire Federal Prospects Hockey League. It's been really a wonder to watch him play and watch him perform. He has stopped 979 shots. I'm oh, sorry, he has faced 979 shots across the course of his season. Only Trevor Martin of Delaware has faced more. And also, as far as total minutes played, Brian Wilson has played 1,785 minutes and 47 seconds, the most by two-thirds of a game, again, over Trevor Martin. Wilson has been phenomenal throughout the course of this season and promises to be in the running for the shiny awards that come due at the end of the season. Danbury looking to improve their record with a win. They also make a roster addition. Connor Woolley signs from Salem State, an NCAA Division III school, playing in the MassCAC. It's up on the North Shore of Massachusetts. Woolley's a local guy from right down the way in Westchester County, New York. Poquag is his home area. He's coming out here. He'll have a bunch of family in the crowd this evening to cheer him on and enjoy a good night of hockey here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Let's give you quickly the starters. Michael Marshall on Lucas DeBenedet, Michael Falanga, the forward lines. Still no Gordy Bennell. They're going to give him another week just to get himself rested up and get himself ready to go again. 
Brendan Dowler and Jared Yao on D. No Zach Pamaleon in the lineup tonight, serving a one-game suspension for an incident stemming from last game. So he's out for the evening. And Brian Wilson gets the goaltending spot for the hat tricks this evening between the pipes. Elmira is rolling out a bunch of former Danbury hat tricks into the lineup this evening. Most notably, Luke Richards, who will be starting tonight. Tris and Tristan Mock, who both played meaningful minutes. And actually, Tristan Mock figured into one of the more dramatic games that the hat tricks played. And Luke, Wils uh, Luke Richards started off incredibly hot to open up this season for the Danbury hat tricks. So both of those guys taking part over there. And also Justin Schmidt and Jim Jensen played with Billy McCreary, a different spot in the FPHL, but they're still going. Well, Levac takes a spot in the lineup as well as expected. Tristan Mock not starting tonight, but he is dressed and he will be skating hard tonight. Nick Golo going as well. No Nathan Campbell or Kyle Stevens for the Elmira Mammoth. Ian Wallace will get the netminding spot for the Elmira Mammoth, who look to try and climb their way up. And as far as their place in the standings, 40 points. They're eight back of Watertown, and Wolves do have two games in hand on them. So they could still hypothetically jump them, but if the playoffs were to begin today, it would be a 1-4 matchup between the Danbury Hattricks and the Elmira Mammoth. So this a preview for what could be, well, be a very good postseason matchup between the Hattricks and the Mammoth. We'll take a quick breather. We'll come back with the, uh, the opening introductions, the starting lineups, and the national anthem. Brief pause, back in a little bit, here on the Dan Murray Hattricks YouTube channel.
In the road, Whites. Lucas DeBenedet and Luke Richards on the dot. DeBenedet will win it. The puck is dropped. We're underway from the Danbury Ice Arena. Marcia Sam will try and flip this one on and in. At one of his first big statement games on the day after Thanksgiving against the Elmira Mammoth with a couple of goals, including a stick between his own legs goal. As that shot will fly on, Brian Wilson will knock it down. He'll give it out of his mitt. Brendan Dowler to Falanga. Wants the pass across from Marchesan. Richards gave it up. It's rolling back into the Mammoth defensive end of the rink. Mammoth nearly turned it over. Gets by Johnny Ruiz. Worth noting, Ruiz McKittrick form up a pairing on what's listed as the third line, but functionally serves as one of the top lines in the league. Jacob Radcliffe on the right. Johnny Ruiz coming off of his best game, goal scoring wise as a hat trick. Four goals, his first, hit the 100 goal milestone as a Danbury hat trick. He had already hit 100 goals as a Fed player, but also had the 10 that he scored with the Elmira Enforcers when they were the team playing and when Danbury was shut out of the 2020-21 season due to still ongoing restrictions of the COVID pandemic. Gonzalez with some room to glide forward. Goes in across the line, Gonzalez breaks in, backhander, he scores! A beauty! Kyle Gonzalez! Not known as a goal scorer, throws himself on the highlight tape. That's about as good a start as you can hope for. You'll see it again. Glides in on the backhander, got it beautifully. And the Chino Hills, California native, gives Danbury an early thing to cheer about. All of a minute and 19 seconds into this one. It is one to nothing for the home team. I'll be curious to see how the rest of the scoring works itself out on that one. Gonzalez, his third goal and 22nd point of the season. It takes not long for Danbury to get in rhythm offensively. McDonald with the long range shot, kicks off the bottom of the boards. Evan Lugo with the keep at the line. He'll walk it in, try to throw it in front. A bit too far ahead of him. Played back up to Yao. McKittrick also with an assist as well on that goal. 
Ruiz and McKittrick, their 15th and 20th assists respectively, their 41st and 34th points respectively. Abdella played it on the wrong side of the line. So an offside's called. Danbury has gotten more and more comfortable in these home black jerseys. With the white sleeves going, the white shoulder going across the top of the jersey. They've become pretty popular here in Danbury. Sneaks ahead, sprinting back to try and get a play. And almost creating something on that, on the good sprint ahead. This will sit against the walls, a hard check thrown. McDonald will knock it free. Abdella, some room to glide on. Marshasson will give it around on the right side. Long pass ahead, McKittrick got a stick on it, so no icing. Louise can't win it. Dowler will flip it in. Danbury only playing with five defensemen this evening. No Zach Pamelion, who really has transitioned into being a full-time defenseman for the hat tricks. Shot on a little bit wide of Brian Wilson. McDonald will sit. Looks for some room to work with. Forward for Ruiz. Give it on to McKittrick. Looks for the tip in front by Ruiz. Didn't have it. The backhander thrown in front. And the net comes pretty clean off of its moorings. Sliding across to try and make a play on that one. It's Ian Wallace. A decent look and a decent attempt at it. Danik Rodrigue, the backup, he was just playing in this building for the Port Huron Prowlers only last weekend. Made his way over to Elmira and is now a part of the Mammoth. So he didn't have to travel very far, he just had to come back out here to Danbury. Clean faceoff win for Igor Borshev, the shot on and the save for Wallace. Be the same guys on the dot again. It's another win for Borshev. He'll work it around, lost control of the puck, bounces to the circle. No Jim Cerny one with me this evening, just me. Gonzalez will get to the circle. Play across for Yao. Friend of the program, Jim Cerny. Is that rolls right along the dasher. I've never seen that happen before. It just rolled right on top of the boards. I think it was a Beyblade. Right against the glass, I've never seen that before. Huh, all sorts of things you see in hockey. A couple of whacks by Kuznetsov. Mammoth will flip this on. Dowler will get to the circle and retrieve the loose puck. Playing with Xavier Abdella right now. On comes to Benedette. Got a couple of points in last weekend's matchup. Got a goal in the 7-3 victory. Benedette will slide over, has some room, looks for the shot, and it goes in! Two nothing, Danbury! Lucas to Benedette, the seeing eye shot, it goes in! And the hat tricks cook it with Connecticut made gas to start the evening. You'll see it again. This is just a simple, keep this in the attacking end, roll it through to the point, and shoot it. That may have been tipped in front. I'd like to see that again if possible, just the tip on the way in. That might have been, but hard to tell. Currently listed, or currently, it's gonna be Lucas De Benedette's goal.
And yep, this is going to be Lucas De Benedet's goal. Marsha Son gets the assist. McDonald, Danbury looking for more, gave it right away, put it on the awaiting tape of Tate Leeson. McDonald brings it through. It's De Benedet's eighth goal of his season since coming here to Danbury, as this is going to turn into an icing. And 13.54 to go. We'll get our first media timeout. We'll take a breather, come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde across the block. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! A word from our friends at Amina's Alterations. Danbury's expert tailors are located just down the road. Over 31 years, locally owned and operated. The official stitcher of the Danbury Hatchets. They mend, hem, repair, and zip it. Check them out online at aminasalterations.com. And be sure to check out our friends at TK's Corner here at the Danbury Ice Arena when you come in to enjoy a game here in Danbury. And make sure you go check out TK's American Cafe on White Street. I went there last night on my own and tried the hot wings, the wings with a special kick to them, their buffalo sauce with some extra Tabasco. Uh, I gotta tell you, I could handle it, but not every day. I'm perfectly fine with the one time as Yao's shot goes right on net and a good save made by Wallace. Yao works his way through some traffic at the point. Wanted to try and put it on properly. Yao. Turns and gives it on backwards for Dowler. Has a pass up for Lugo at the line. Off of Dowler's mitt. Dowler will run down and go and get this. Takes the hit. Yao. And forward for Kuznetsov. Two goals so far tonight, one belonging to Kyle Gonzalez, the other as Dowler with the hard check. Knocks his man straight into the bench. The puck came out of bounds. Or sorry, out of play, went into the bench. Ryan Wilson has faced three shots on goal. Danbury officially has only gotten two shots on net. Mammoth looking for their first real offensive sequence. Threw it in front, rolls its way all the way up to the point. Tries it again, shot wide. Wilson never saw it. McGuire takes the hard hit from Marchison and goes down in a heap. To Benedet, off to Gonzalez. Falanga, some room to work with. Across for to Benedet. Lucas to Benedet glides in, gets knocked down to the ice. Falanga will play this one up to Johnny Mack at the blue line. Dips by one man. Had Falanga, lost control of the puck, got it back. Works it down low for Marchesson. Threw a backhander in front. Yao sprinting off the bench. Elmira arguing that that should be an offsides. They are going to win that argument. They're going to see that hit again. This is Marchesson's hit, laying his posterior directly into, an, into Thomas McGuire. Hard hip check, a good clean hip check. Ruiz up to Ratcliffe. Yao. Has some options, he'll dump it deep. Ratcliffe will go and chase it. Ratcliffe worked off the puck. 
bounces. Looks for some room. Long pass ahead. Yao will sprint on, and this will be an icing call with 11.57 left to go. Danbury having to spend some time in their own defensive end of the rink. Clean win. A good bit of control for the Wild. Just for the outlet, running on is Molovac. Knocked down, nearly cleared up, gathered in. Fans on the shot, Gonzalez to take the puck for a spin. Whistle sounds. Tristan Mock on the glide down. 11.39, the time remaining. Here in the first period, 2-0 in favor of the Hattricks. De Benedet and Gonzalez, the two goal scorers. Borshev stepping on the dot. Not a lot of shots, only two have gone on net for Danbury, but they have both gone in. Dowler tries to work this free. Dowler will lay his check on Nick Gullo. Lugo has some room to work with. A sprint ahead, tries the self-pass, nearly works. He gets upended and knocked down by Chris Marate. Della across for McDonald. Benedet, cross for Lugo. Tied up under a few guys, Dmitry Kuznetsov. Put it up for McDonald. Kuznetsov, a couple of spins. Looks for the shot on net and a very nice save by Ian Wallace. The tie up, the Mammoth will take it back and use the net as a shield, throw it up to the wing. Lance Kiss has his pass for Luke Richards. Fan of the program, Richards will throw his shot on net. Wilson will put it away in his mitt. Luke Richards probably thinking, hey, I had that happen to me a bunch of times in practice. <laughs> Richards will stay on and take the draw against Lucas De Benedet. The official asked for another moment, and we're good to go. Clean win for De Benedette. They've done very well on the dot, winning possessions. Rolls to the point, seeing I shot blocker. Got a piece of it on the way in, did Brian Wilson. A little bit too far for Marchesson to control it. Winds up with a long range shot. Wilson in and out of his mitt, gave it across to McDonald. Abdella wanted it up and forward for Falanga. Asked to recover. Richards. And Kalisnik doing their work. Abdella. Eve hit the middle mark of the first period. Marsha Sano glide in. Flips it for Falanga. At the circle. Falanga to a knee. Puck free. On comes Lavac. Has some room. He'll lob it in. Dowler glides. Got to it, threw it across. Leeson's the first man for the Mammoth there for it. Ruiz will take the puck away, absorbs the body contact. Falanga threw it across for Lavac. Dowler knocks his man down. Kicked off of Ratcliffe's skate. Bounces onto Dowler's control. Yao sprints in. Yao to the circle, pulls up, looks for the shot, sailed it wide. Ruiz will settle it. Pitchfork it in, takes the check by Noah Wild and will regroup. This will be an icing call with 8.51 to go in the stanza. We'll take a breather. Quick pause back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel.
Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo of Danbury is the premier automobile partner in the Danbury area. Located on Newtown Road, the Bennett family has been putting the community behind the wheel for over 35 years. Dream big. Drive a Maserati or Alfa Romeo. New and pre-owned vehicles available. Let Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo be your choice. 2-0 Danbury in the lead over the visiting Elmira Mammoth. 8.51, the time remaining in the first period. First goal came quick as Gonzalez has to sprawl out to keep it in the attacking end. Borshev dies as well. Up to Gould at the wing, Dolo at the wing. On and through, Gonzalez knocks down Wild. Xavier Abdella will look for an outlet. He'll take it himself. Through one stick check, Abdella trying to make like Gonzalez went down. Here's Connor Woolley, winds up his first shot as a hat trick is stopped. Kuznetsov. They'll leave it low. Wants it for Marchesson, worked off of his stick. Golo will sprint ahead. Golo pulls up, poked down by Yao. Across for Marchesson. De Benedet glides in. Yeah, wants the shot. Hits Gullo right in the back. Bob Den Wilson will put it in his mitt and just take the time. A low shot game to this point. Four to four is listed up on the scoreboard. Not a lot of offensive opportunities between these two teams. Shot on, stopped, and Yao will sky it into the protective netting. This is the first part of a home and home. Danbury and Elmira will meet up at First Arena tomorrow night to continue their weekend series. Patricks will be on the road next weekend as the shot on caught Wilson's blocker. Another chance on. Marsha Son will slide across. It'll be Moto Cross will be here next weekend. Falanga won the race to the puck through a backhand behind him. Three on three. Three come the mammoth with a few trailing defensemen through and across. Oh, Jelenskis had a great chance. Tried the wrap around and caught the side of the net. Did Thomas McGuire. Up comes Dowler. Dowler will hand it backwards. Falanga spins. Looks for it to McKittrick. Jelenskis takes a couple of checks. Jelenskis will give it up to Xavier Abdella, lobbed in. Ruiz going and giving chase. Settled by McKittrick. Radcliffe turns, looks for an angle, doesn't have it. Given off to McDonald, wants to roof it, and he skied it over everything instead. Got tipped on the way up. So an offensive zone faceoff for the hat tricks. On the tie-up. Rung past Mock. McDonald will ring it deep. 6.13 to go. Here in the first period, 2-0 Danbury in the lead. Ruiz with his check on Mock. Abdella with a follow-up hit. Puck's charged free. McDonald has forward a little bit too far off. McKittrick, this will turn into an icing. Seven to six, the score. Ruiz and Levac on the dot to Brian Wilson's right. 
Ruiz with a clean win. Abdella punched in by Leeson. Four players working against the corner, two for each side. Yao sprints over to the loose puck. Pass off the boards for Ratcliffe. The New Zealander throws it forward for Ruiz, who will shovel it deep. Ruiz eludes a hit. Goes down, no penalty whistled on this. Hard check by Ruiz. Getting a little bit of an answer. Kuznetsov has Lugo on the opposite wing. The diagonal pass too far ahead for him. Well out of his net went Wallace. Lugo tried to spring it across. Yao has to sprint to the blue line to control it. Too far for Borshev. Lugo and Borshev wrestling for it. Lugo with the stick lift. Hands it off. Kuznetsov. Has to throw a check. Mock will throw this puck out into neutral space. Gonzalez will dump it deep. Wallace will settle it. Borshev staying out there. Lugo as well. McDonald to the loose puck at the blue line. And working across, had Kuznetsov. It got tangled up in his skates. Kuznetsov turns, fumbles possession, gets it back. What's up? And I'll ring it around. Here's Lugo. Thrown it to the circle, bounces off of Kuznetsov's stick, and Gullo will backhand this out over the jumping Johnny McDonald. Dowler. Tipped before anything else. This will be an icing. With 4.03 left to go, we'll have our final media timeout of the first period. Quick breather back in one second from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. from our friends at Peach Wave of Bethel. Located on Greenwood Avenue in Bethel, Peach Wave is your go-to place for a quality treat. Yogurt and toppings, it doesn't get much better. Catch a wave, a peach one. Herm Sorcher continuing to do his incredible work. And one here is just one for yogurt to Peach Wave Bethel, very tasty over there. Richards into Benedette on the dot. Clean draw one for De Benedette, who's got a goal in this game. Marchesson with an assist. That was his 14th assist and 33rd point. Richards will throw it across for the uncharging Marate. Falanga has to work this out across the blue line. Jelenskis. Takes the check. This is going to be a penalty against Falanga. And Danbury is about to go on the penalty kill. Threw it a little bit too far. Falanga will get a stick on it. And for the first time in today's proceedings, a team is going on to the special teams. You'll see it again here. It's Falanga coming across. Ruiz. Tried to lob it deep. It's away from the puck. And this is Ruiz falling down, so. So a high sticking play being called against Falanga. Danbury, an 81% on the dot penalty kill. Elmira, a 17% success rate on the power play, seventh in the FPHL across the entire course of the season. 
Danbury scored a shorthanded goal in their Friday night matchup against the Port Huron Prowlers last week and really won the game as a result of their special teams thrown in front. Golo couldn't get it cleanly on net. Gonzalez and Abdella comfortable with just stapling this to the apron of the goal. Puck is free, Leeson to a knee up to Golo. Needs some help. Leeson will give it on backwards for Golo. Wound up, didn't like the pass shot, blocked. Ruiz sprinting ahead. Johnny Ruiz, one on one. Ruiz taken down. Johnny Ruiz had a chance. This should be a penalty shot. And indeed, they're signaling, they're pointing to center ice. This is going to be a penalty shot for the Danbury Hattricks. Ruiz taken down, like right up to the neck, taken down by Tyson Lambert. The puck sits at center ice, and for the first time all season here at home, the Danbury Hattricks have a penalty shot. I believe this is also the first penalty shot of the entire season. So, Johnny Ruiz, the team's leading goal scorer, 26 goals, 40 points. One of the top scorers in the FPHL. Lining this up against Wallace. Here we go. Ruiz takes it at center, works it up, glides to the slot, winds up, shoots it, and scores! A penalty shot goal for the captain, Johnny Ruiz, makes it 3-0. This is just classic. Winds up, shoots it, rips it. Nothing more complicated. Very few things as beautiful as that. I believe that also will be counted as a shorthanded. I'm curious to know how exactly that gets recorded. It's a shoot, it's a penalty shot goal. The penalty was taken when Danbury was shorthanded. So does that get counted as a shorthanded penalty shot goal? I'm just not sure. There's still a minute left to go on Elmira's man advantage. Abdella will poke that one out for Borshev. We'll ring it off the boards. Find its way all the way to the opposite end of the rink. Gathered up. 35 seconds left. Richards will swoop it forward. Fumbled possession, got it back. Richards will ring it deep. 20 seconds of power play time left. Wilson up to Marcia Son. Knocked down. Left low for to Benedette. Marcia Son cheating ahead. Final 10 seconds of the advantage. He flipped around, Lavac tries to control it. And that is that. Falanga's out of the box. For the second game in three games, the Hattricks get a shorthanded goal. Bad turnover, McGuire walks it, looks for the chance. Wilson got a cross, and the net's open, and they score. The initial shot stopped, and all too fittingly, Luke Richards scores it to get the Mammoth on the board just after the power play expired. McDonald will lob this one deep. That's Richard's ninth goal of the season. Split between his time here in Danbury and his time so far with Elmira. That's his second goal in now six games with the Mammoth. Ruiz forces the turnover. Ruiz across to Radcliffe. The puck sneaks underneath his stick. 
Rees walks it, turns it, shot sails over. Did that go in? Where's the puck? Follow-up shot by Radcliffe will find its way a little bit wide. Danbury not wasting any time. McKittrick tries the wraparound, wants the shot, and it is stopped. And that's even more fitting. The assist on that goal by Luke Richards, Tristan Mock. A pair of former hat tricks getting in on the scoring fun against their old teammates. Borshev wrestling with Lavak for face-off position. Leeson. Wooley in pursuit, no one there. Wooley playing in his first pro game, coming up from the Salem State Vikings in Salem, Massachusetts. Dowler's going off for a penalty, and we get some ugly. Dowler throws a hit, this will be a boarding call. Looked like it was Mo Levac who took the worst of it. Luis and Gullo skate over towards the penalty box to hear the word from the officials. Dowler laid a check going up. I think this might just be a two minute boarding penalty. This might be more, unsure at this point in time. Dowler being ushered off to the box. Levac gets back up and will skate away under his own power. Fifteen and a half seconds remain to be played in the first. And for the second time, the Danbury hat tricks are going to be shorthanded. They've gotten one goal shorthanded already. Richards, Gullo, Leeson. Dalton Anderson and Thomas McGuire will skate out onto the ice along with Tristan Mock. Ruiz Yao McKittrick and McDonald will be the skaters for Danbury. 3-1 the score. Danbury led 3-0 before Richards' goal. Is this going to be a neutral zone face-off. They, they're lining it up that way, so Elmira fans and Bench not terribly pleased, but it is going to be a neutral zone face-off. Golo will sprint across and get this one final 10 seconds. Do they have enough time to get a shot on goal? Wilson will just leave it for Yao, who will ring it out round the dasher. Settled by Golo. Can't get a shot away before time expires. That's that, and we get some continued conversations after the whistle. Gullo having a chat with some of the guys, and it's not gonna be any more than that. 16 seconds of the power play have gone off the clock, and the hat tricks lead it three to one, a wonderful offensive explosion. The exclamation mark, the penalty shot, for Johnny Ruiz, the first penalty shot of the season for the Danbury Hattricks. We'll take a breather and come back in a little bit with the some notes and observations and word around the league. Here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel, quick pause back in just a second from the Danbury Ice Arena.
We're through one at the Danbury Ice Arena. Chris Lynch on the call with you here today. Let's take a quick look at the goings on and happenings across the FPHL. A loaded night as far as games being played are concerned. Of course, there's this game in which the hat tricks lead it three to one. There's a game that the hat tricks fans are keeping their eyes on with considerable interest. That's the Binghamton Columbus game. That'll have a big impact as to how the standings work themselves out. That game goalless after one. Carolina and Motor City, they're in the second period. It's two to one in favor of the Rockers. Port Huron is visiting Delaware. They're in the second period and the Thunder lead that game over the Prowlers. A uh, good start for the Delaware Thunder. And Watertown is in Mississippi. That game has gotten underway pretty recently. 8.05 Eastern, 7.05 Central. That game is currently knotted even at one goal apiece. Parker Mascal continues his torrid scoring ways, so good on him for continuing to keep up his pace for the Wolves. And again, 1-0 Delaware, 1-0 Watertown, 2-1 Motor City over Carolina. Goalless so far between Binghamton and Columbus. And 3-1 in favor of the hometown hat tricks here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Brian Wilson has faced 13 shots on goal. The shots really picked up as the frame went along. Recorded it very, very well. Stopped 12 of them and it's all too fitting that the first goal scored by the Elmira Mammoth was scored by Luke Richards and was assisted by Tristan Mock. Kyle Gonzalez, Lucas DeBenedette, and Johnny Ruiz with the goals for the hat tricks. Gonzalez, a nifty glide off his backhand. DeBenedette, a seeing eye shot. And Johnny Ruiz, the most stylish of them all, a penalty shot that was taken when we were sitting in a shorthanded situation. So officially, at least in building, it's been listed as a shorthanded penalty shot. We're still trying to sort out exactly how to correctly rule that, but however it is, it's a goal, so it's 3-1. Brendan Dowler still has a minute and 35 seconds worth a penalty time to kill off as he is sitting in the box right now as the puck has been dropped and we're underway for the second period between the hat tricks and Mammoth. Leeson flies in. Leeson keeps the puck on his backhand, got it up to the blue line. Shot sailed well wide. It'll find its way back out. Golo in retreat. Turning and running with it, Golo, across the line, pulls up, got to the circle, dished it back to the blue line for Dalton Anderson to set it up. Marco looking for the seeing eye shot, went right on to Wilson who makes the stop. 50 seconds in, we get our first stoppage in the second period. Shots eight, uh, 14 to eight for the visitors. Now Myra has ultimately had more shots Danbury has gotten them through though, has gotten more of them through I should say. 55 seconds worth of penalty time still to go. De Benedetta clean face off win. Gave it around for Meow. Thomas McGuire is being awarded a secondary assist. That's right in front. Great stop by Wilson. Blows it dead. Slid across and made the stop. Again, McGuire is being awarded a secondary assist on Richard's goal. Borshev and Richards on the dot. 8.38 on the Eastern Seaboard. Lugo 
Takes the check, goes down to a knee. We have 35 seconds of penalty time left. Borshev in hot pursuit on the rung in puck. Lugo will settle it. Knocks it off of Richard Stick. A little bit too far ahead for Borshev, but he would have played it off sides anyway. 20 seconds of penalty time left. Richards. Cross for Jelenskis. Richards will backhand this one deep. Wilson will settle it. It's being blown dead as an offsides call. So we'll come out to neutral ice with five seconds of penalty time left to kill on Dowler's penalty. Borshev with a face-off win in the attacking end of the rink. A whistle will sound. The penalty is over. Dowler out of the box. He'll head directly to the bench. Lugo and Borshev doing good work to keep this moving in the attacking end. Kuznetsov tried to whack it. Lugo and Borshev, a good shift. Got it across to Kuznetsov. Threw it in front to Lugo and the pass a little too far ahead for him to connect with it properly and knock it into the net. Good shift. Kuznetsov with the idea. Under Gonzalez. Lugo taken away. Leeson camping in front. Backhand shot blown across the open crease. Lugo. Given for Gonzalez. Got to the blue line. Gonzalez glides in. He's already got one beauty. Gets denied a real chance to attack. Richards will take away the puck. And it's a good hit by Jim Jensen. Yao tries to flip this out. McKittrick gets underneath his man. The shot, a big rebound off of Wallace. Gotten by Yao. And that center ice flipped to the boards. McDonald settles. Yao takes a hard check. Richards over the middle. In, looks, shot, save, made. Brian Wilson, a very good shot. A good looking attack. Faceoff is down. Dowler can't win it. Louise and Wild contested. Louise got a stick on it. Mock trying to work it free. Radcliffe absorbs the contact and keeps it moving. Threw it to McKittrick. Winds up, shoots it. Save made. Rebound is loose, but it's gathered and gotten by Tyson Lambert. Long pass ahead for Mock. Dowler's back for it. Dowler wrestling with Mock. He's done this a bunch of times throughout the course of many practices. Kittrick will try and take a whack at it. Richards. We'll funnel this out. Thrown across the open ice. De Benedette's the only man there for it. Lucas De Benedette already with a goal walks in, winds up the shot, and it's stopped. Lucas De Benedette has been a problem to say the very least. McDonald lobbed on sides. Schmidt will pull it up. Lob it in, sneaks underneath the stick. Abdella will put it up to Marchesson. The puck is free. De Benedette threw it across for a sprinting McDonald. Puck bounces up. Lobbed in. Wilson will put it away in his mitt with 15 17, the time remaining.
Three one the advantage. So far all of the goals have come in the first period. Still waiting for our first tally. Gonzalez will leave it for Jared Yao. Yao leading the team in blue line scoring with 27 points in 38 games, 25 assists. Danbury has really relied on their defensemen to you know, provide the defense. They haven't relied on them for the goal scoring. As Lugo goes down, Yao on the loose puck. Borshev not there for it. Rolled it in towards shot. Looks for a rebound and nearly, nearly snuck it through. We've got our media timeout. We'll take a breather. Come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Clancy moving and relocation. Moving is stressful, but it doesn't have to be. Call Clancy and let them do the heavy lifting. Residential and commercial plus other services including storage. Remember, Clancy is fancy. Word from our friends also at Texas Roadhouse. You can go out and enjoy your time with them. Everything is bigger in Texas and everything is better right there. The Texas Roadhouse in Danbury. Interstellar, the movie of choice, played up on the board. And everyone here has won a free appetizer from the Danbury hat trick. So, congratulations for knowing very good movies. Not my favorite Nolan film, that's The Dark Knight, but still, Interstellar, a fabulous, fabulous film. Here comes McKittrick. Ahead for Dowler, cuts it to the middle. Dowler with a shot, it trickles off the outstretched middle of Ian Wallace. Dowler hot out of the box. Diagonal pass for Mock. Takes the check from his former captain, Ruiz. Kittrick, Radcliffe went down away from the puck. He just blew a tire. Any more than that. Dowler for McDonald. What is a quick moving period for the most part. De Benedet throws his check. Marchesson will work it back to the circle. Richards to the blue line. Richards, shot, sailed wide. Marchesson will get on the loose puck. Rolls too far ahead of him. De Benedet. Played and controlled from the center logo. Cuts it to the circle. Thrown it. Shot. Nice, nice save by Wallace. Brilliant look for Connor Woolley. The local man looking to get his first goal of his professional career. The former Salem State Viking was part of getting them to the Mascac Championship game last year. Held to Plymouth State. Their season all done now. Here he is. Right back home, essentially. Yao to Marcia Sam. Scores! Michael Marcia Wicked wrister. And it's 4 1 for the Hat Tricks. This isn't that complicated of a goal. Hand it off from Yao at the circle. Grip it, rip it, and caught the left post. A wicked shot for Michael Marchesson. His second point of the evening. Got an assist on Lucas de Benedet's goal earlier on as the puck will be covered up by Wilson. 
That's Marcia Son's 20th goal of the season. Marcia Son started off his season with the Binghamton Black Bears as Kuznetsov will deny the icing. Marcia Son, the third hat trick this season to get to 20 goals. Kuznetsov is the next closest. He's sitting on 19. Marcia Son with the goal. It'll be Jared Yao getting the primary assists. Lucas De Benedet will get his second point of the game. Dowler. Runs it against the boards. Borshev will poke it free for Lugo. Kuznetsov glides in, spins, lost control of the puck. Loose for Dowler, who will ring it in. Borshev continues to give chase. And it's gotten on first by Blake Cudmore. Eludes the stick check of Radcliffe. Gave it on backwards, McKittrick. Still there for it. Ruiz will pick it off. Johnny Ruiz will walk it in. Tries the toe drag. Spins and will leave it for McKittrick. Tried to throw it up top. Bounces away from Ruiz. Two on one with a trailer for Tristan Mock from Richards. Mock absorbs the body contact from Yao. Radcliffe. Will spin it. And at the blue line, Mock. Free shot, saved by Wilson. It rolls to the boards. Had him dead to rights. High slot shot, another save by Brian Wilson, who just continues his excellent performance in net for the hat tricks this season. McKittrick and Radcliffe gliding in two on two. McKittrick, backhander shot. Good save by Wallace. McKittrick will ring it deep. Radcliffe and to Benedette there for it. To Benedette. Works it. Up top for Falanga. Shot on. Stopped. Good save made. Hand it off. Wanted to get it to the circle for Radcliffe. Jacob Radcliffe lost possession. To Benedette will sprint to the bench. Got there in time. Will lob it in. On the blue line, Falanga off sides. Falanga being ruled that he was on the wrong side of the blue line when he played it. And Danbury still had skaters in the attacking end of the rink. For Jared Yao, that's his 26th assist of the season, up to 28 points, the leading defenseman scorer for the Danbury Hattricks. 10-17 to play in the second. Dowler up for McDonald. Bobbed in off the base of the boards. Absorbs the body contact. Does Tyson Lambert. Marcia Son will poke it sky high. Onto the slot a little bit too far ahead of Jelenskis. And we'll come to our under 10 media timeout. We'll take a quick breather, come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena. Quick pause, back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, Vec with a couple on. of big rights. He scores!
right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hunt. Under 10 to go. Danbury on the attacking end of the rink. Lugo tries to work this free, lobbed out over McDonald's head. This has the chance to turn into an icing call, and it will. Quick word from our friends at Dowler Garage in New Preston, specializing in batteries, brakes, and general service. When you're stuck, you're in luck. Call Mike so you don't need a bike. Our friends at Dowler Garage. Wire across. Wooley stands his ground. Schmidt will wind up at the top of the circle, looks for the shot, rebound off of Wilson's pad. Wilson will give it off for Wooley. Taken down. Uncle with the shot, kick saved by Wilson. Lugo will go and get this. Works it across for Gonzalez. Uli, given for Lugo, Lugo, we'll just take it back to neutral, McKittrick has to hop back on sides, he overran the puck, that is still going to be whistled as an offsides infraction, with 8.50 left. Borshev will win it cleanly. Yao holds and looks underneath Borshev. No icing. Ratcliffe takes a hit. Was falling down, got back up. Abdella will lob it in, and Wallace very smartly will just put that puck away in his mitt. Trying to work it on. Gathered at the circle and running out. Dropped for Dalton Anderson. Golan Yao collide in the corner. McKittrick and Borshev. Flip it on across to Abdella. Some room forward. McKittrick walks in, has numbers. McKittrick goes down in a heap. And a follow-up hit by Borshev. And now we got it going. Now we got a full-on Donnie Brook and a wrestling scrum here at the Danbury Ice Arena. This all starts with a hit that McKittrick took. Yao's still in the mix of it with Markle. Borshev threw a hit in retaliation. Yao jawing at some folks. So Jared Yao is going off. This is the hit that sparked the incident. Went down, Borshev didn't like it. Yao got in on the action as well. This is gonna be a complicated sequence of penalties to sort out. I don't envy Dre, the public address announcer. They've thrown two minutes up on the board for Igor Borshev. Golo and Ruiz just having a friendly chat. No hostilities between those two. Just waiting for official word from the refs. It's a 4-1 advantage for the hat tricks. They have killed off the penalties they have taken. Borshev and Yao sitting in the box. I'm trying to tell who it is sitting on the, I think that's MJ Markle who's sitting in there for Elmira. I'm just trying to figure out, yep, that looks like Markle who's sitting in the box. So with 8.04 left, by the way, the shots are getting increasingly lopsided for Elmira, 22 to 12. The Mammoth have had the much much better offensive looks, much better offensive chances. 
they have looked more in control of this game, to this point anyway, than have the Danbury hat tricks. A quick word from our friends at the Amber Room Colony. The Amber Room is an award-winning premier catering venue located in the rolling hills of Western Connecticut. For your next event, think Amber Room and make it a night to remember. 4-1 the score. Danbury is going to be shorthanded. A two-minute penalty against Igor Borshev. Yao and Markle also sitting down. Elmira 0 for 2 on the man advantage so far tonight. Danbury's penalty kill has done their jobs. Anderson will give it to the goal line extended. Leeson drives in. Wilson trying to get his glove on the puck and does. Ruiz and Anderson will step to the dot again. Off the Gonzalez. Stapled in Ruiz and Lugo. Turn this into a two on one. In they come. Lugo scores! A short handed goal for Evan Lugo. And the hat tricks take command. 5-1 here in Hat City. This is just a simple shot. Got to the circle, puts it on net. Jim Jensen, the only defenseman back. Ruiz, your options were either to take the shot yourself or give it across to Johnny Ruiz, who also had an open look. Evan Lugo decides to shoot his shot his ninth goal of the season, his 25th point. For the Sandy Hook, Connecticut native, the local man makes it 5-1, 30 seconds into Elmira's power play. That's the second time this evening that the Hattricks have scored a goal while the Mammoth have been on the power play. The first one was Ruiz's penalty shot goal and then this one belongs to Lugo. By the way, we're just now getting all of the penalties. A double minor for roughing on Jared Yao, a double minor for roughing on MJ Markle and a two minute holding minor on Igor Borshev. So those are all of the penalties going against the Hattricks and Mammoth. Yao will have to serve the full time as will Markle. Borshev has 30 seconds more waiting in the penalty box before he can hop out. Golo walks into the circle, threw it low. Leeson. Looking for a play, threw it to the slot. Had the right idea, just didn't quite connect with Thomas McGuire. It's Johnny Ruiz getting the assist. Golo looks for the shot, it's blocked. Here comes Marchison. Turns up at the bench and will roll it deep. Borshev's out of the box. The hat tricks are three for three on the penalty kill and have scored two goals while down a skater. Again, it really does depend on how exactly you count penalty shot goals. Lugo walks in, Lugo the backhander and the save. And there has been a goaltending change. Danik Rodrigue. Rodrigue was in net just last weekend for the Port Huron Prowlers. And now here he is, same building, same crease, different jersey. And second time he's relieving 
a guy who had a kind of rough time in net. Ruiz to the loose puck. Ruiz, the shot and the save. Ruiz wanting to go with Wild. He'll win the draw up to Gonzalez. Shot blocked by Richards. This will be a slashing penalty against Kyle Gonzalez. Stick came right cleanly out of Richards' hands. This will be the fourth power play of the evening for the Elmira Mammoth. They've given up shorthanded goals on each of their last two power plays. So here we go. Ruiz and Richards on the dot. Richards has scored the only mammoth goal of the evening. Flipped out by McKittrick. Richards will pick it up behind the net and go. Richards across the blue line and the red. Pulls up, looks for some room. Hands back off. Arietta looks for the shot. Has it tipped by McDonald. Richards needs some space. Mateo. Richards winds up for the shot. Sits at the end boards. McKittrick couldn't quite control it. Mateo retreating. Looks for the pass forward, has his man, Justin Schmidt. He'll pull it up and step in. Schmidt, the puck will bounce free. McKittrick, ahead for Johnny Ruiz, in alone. Johnny Ruiz, oh, a save by Danek Rodrigue. Ruiz still working at this. Ruiz trying to spring free of Richards. Ruiz holds it. Falanga on with him. Ruiz threw it across for Michael Falanga, keeping it in the... Elmira, defensive end of the rink. Falanga spinning with it, like a top. Falanga still with it. Falanga, De Benedet had set up at the slot, and the hat tricks possessing this beautifully to kill off this penalty. There's 30 seconds left. De Benedet will come across. Puck came high on Richards. They'll fly this out for Dowler. Danbury will get a change. Up and forward, too far for De Benedet. Puck sneaks underneath the mammoth skater. And they'll regroup and gather this up with 15 seconds left. Borshev worked around. Marchesan and holding his mouth. Still on the ice. Final five seconds of the man advantage for the Mammoth are going to trickle off the clock. And the hat tricks have killed off all penalties. They have taken this evening. Passed too far for Gonzalez. He'll head off to the box. Streaking out. Knocked down by Lugo. Given across. 3-12, the time remaining. Rodrigue will play it off to his backhand side. Lobbed forward by Lambert. Abdella gets underneath. Tristan Mocken wins the race to the puck. Cheating ahead is McKittrick. Runs into the corner. This is going to be an odd offsides called. We'll take our final timeout of the period. Quick pause back in the moment from the Danbury Ice Arena. Here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. our friends at McCabe's Classic Deli over in Brookfield. They're ready to serve you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
Grab and go, or ready to heat and eat. McCabe's is food with a Bronx flair. <laughs> Under three minutes to play here in the second period, Danbury has gotten a couple goals. McKittrick up for Ratcliffe, wants it back across, shot, save made, rebound not there. Radcliffe will work it to the left. Finds its way out, and this will be a pretty easy icing call against the Mammoth. Danbury only has 17 shots on goal. It has been quite a wicked setup. Five of their 17 shots have gone in the net. Ruiz loses the draw. Up to Richards. Settled down by McDonald. Flown and off the metal facing of the Sweets. Couple of tie-ups right at the center dot. Settled down by Lambert. Went across to his D partner, Blake Cudmore. Abdella working on for Borshev. Dmitry Kuznetsov stopped, lost stick, followed up, chance not there. Abdella works the puck. Abdella across for Johnny McDonald, has some room. Winds up, looks for the shot, Rodrigue with the stop. He lost his stick, got it back. Hattrick's offense continues to be relentless. These teams will meet up again tomorrow. Taking the trip out to the southern tier of New York. We'll have head coach of the Danbury Hattricks, Billy McCreary, joining us during the second intermission. Lucas De Benedet tries to spin with it. Dowler controls and gives it across for Gonzalez. McDonald, Arshison in for a shot. Sailed a little bit wide to the left. Falanga on the loose puck. Up for Gonzalez. S tries to spring his way free. Falanga will settle the puck. Works it loaded to Benedette, draws his man up. Dowler stopped by Rodrigue. He's been excellent since coming into the between the pipes. Shot a little bit wide. Falanga over Dowler's head. He has to race back. Gallo running with him. Dowler. Poke this one around. We're now under 53 seconds to go. Circle shot blocked. Richards. Has some room, Richards. Up and through Gonzalez. McKittrick couldn't get to it. Dowler will try and clear this. Zelenska's shot blocked by Dowler. He's having a very good game defensively speaking. Turns, looks, kicks it up for McKittrick. Final 20 seconds. They have time. McKittrick. Takes it through, stick came up high. And whistle McKittrick will try and keep working with this puck. Final 10 seconds of the period. Knocked down by McDonald. This is a hand pass. Caught McDonald's hand and came right on in. Four point eight seconds left to go in the second period. This is what McKittrick had his hands up for. A stick came up and caught him. That'll fly out into the stands. Fair warning, hockey is a participation sport. I hope that nice fan is enjoying his puck souvenir that he is going to walk away from this game with. Oh, he's gonna give it to somebody else or is he gonna keep it? It's not a kid around for him to immediately give it to. 
Oh, no, nope, there is one. Kid looking for it, and he looks like he's all right. So that's that. Actually, officially, there's still half a second up on the board. They'll run it off, and that is that. The Danbury Hattricks lead 5-1 over the Elmira Mammoth. A fabulous offensive performance again for Danbury. Five shots on 21 goals and chasing Ian Wallace from the Elmira net. We'll take a breather and come back in just a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. We'll stay around to show you the fun festivities, the Chuck-a-Puck and shootout contest. We'll take a breather, come back in a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena.
Second intermission here at the Danbury Ice Arena. I am joined by the head coach of the Danbury Hatricks, Billy McCreary. And Billy, it's nice to see a good offensive performance and for the second straight game, chase the goaltender. Yeah, for sure. The guys are firing the puck and uh, they seem to be finding the net right now and hopefully we can keep that going here for the last 20. And another good performance for Brian Wilson. It gets a little bit boring to talk about how consistent and how excellent he's been, but really, it's just one of those consistent factors where he's been one of the best goaltenders, if not the best goaltender in the league throughout the course of the season. And he's showing it again so far this evening. Yeah, 100%. I mean, hockey's a game of mistakes, and when we break down, I've, I've said it a hundred times, um, you know, Willie's always been there for us, and he uh, he had a tremendous 40 minutes there, so again, another 20 here to close it out. And a thing that's worth noting is that I think one of the defining things in the first two periods has been the penalty kill. There's four penalties taken so far. All four of them have been successfully killed off. One draw to a penalty shot that Johnny scored on, and one got another short What's been, this penalty kill has always been at least all right throughout the course of the season. It's been performing at an even higher rate over these last couple of games, certainly the goals in 2003. What's been the big change and what's been the improvement that's been made that's led to more results like the ones we're seeing here in the penalty kill? Well, it's certainly something that we focus on during the week, but, uh, you know, the guys really buy into it. And, um, you know, maybe that and a little bit of the hockey god shining on us too, you know, you, Last game, we take a five-minute major at the beginning of the game, and, um, you know, we come out and score two on that. And, you know, guys have uh, two shorties here tonight with Johnny's with Johnny's goal there. So, um, yeah, I you know things are – boys are working. They're blocking shots. They're buying into what we ask them to do. And, you know, to their credit, uh, they're always looking to attack. And, you know, it's been a successful here venture, a successful venture here the last uh, couple of weeks. Well, I think they're, they're doing a great job. I, I think we can continue to control our emotions a little more and understand that there is only five of us back there and you know we don't have to we don't have to contribute in every aspect of the game. So need those guys on the ice and you know they're doing an awesome job right now and we got twenty more here to go. You had mentioned to me earlier that you had played with Justin Schmidt and Jim Jensen when you were a player here in the Fed. That's got to be something interesting to see some of your old teammates that now you're coaching against them. Yeah, it definitely makes me want to tie the skates again, that's for sure. <laughs> and a couple of other friends that we're getting to see again. It seems oddly fitting that Luke Richards and Tristan Mock have combined to help score so far the only goal for Elmira. That's got to be kind of an interesting emotion playing against guys who really did do an awful lot for this team throughout the course of the season. So yeah, I, you know, I got to tell you, you never want to give up a goal, but it's great seeing those guys, uh, you know, have success. And, and they did so much here in, in Danbury. And, 
you know, unfortunately we can't keep everybody here. And, um, you know, I can't say enough good things about them. And to see them get rewarded was was great. And, you know, we take a lot of pride in the type of people that we, we recruit here. And, you know, we like to think that, that that makes our team better. And we also like to think that that makes the league better. So we're here to grow the game. And, you know, those are two uh, two guys that certainly help us do it. Professional debut for Connor Rooney. He's had a couple of very good look at chips, a couple of nice, uh, nice shots. He's from my vantage point of year. From your side on the bench, how have you thought uh, Connor Rooney has performed when he was in the state? Yeah, he's given us some good energy here. He's he seems to found some uh, some opportunistic chances. They haven't fallen for him, but I think if he keeps working hard and getting himself into those areas, you know, he's got a good stick. He's got a good shot. You know, he has the ability to find the twine here. So, if he can keep working, the boys can keep working. You know, hopefully, uh, hopefully one number stays the same and one continues to rise here. Twenty more minutes to go. What's the message to the guys in the locker room? We just got to continue to hit the details, and, and when we do, uh, we're really good. And, and I thought for the most part in that 40, you know, we've hit those details. Uh, if our emotions get the best of us, we start to we start to slip on those details. And I think for five or six minutes out of that 40, um, you probably saw a little bit of that. So let's play a complete 20 here and, and move on with the three points. The head coach of the Danbury Hatchets, Billy McCurry, joining us upstairs. Billy, thanks so much. Good luck in the third period. Thanks for having me. We'll take a breather. Come back in a moment.
Getting close to the third period, kicking off here at the Danbury Ice Arena. 5-1, Danbury and Elmira. Hat tricks in the lead. Let's take a quick look around the scores from around the FPHL. We are at the end of the second period between Binghamton and Columbus. That game is tied up at one goal apiece. Motor City is leading Carolina 4-1 in the third period of that matchup. Port Huron and Delaware currently in the third. It's 4-2 Delaware in the lead over the Prowlers. Motor City in the lead over Carolina. That is a very good score to see for, from the Motor City perspectives, that they can build some cushion and get the third spot in the postseason from the Continental Division side of things. And Watertown visiting Mississippi 2-1 in favor of the Seawolves as we tick down towards the... Actually, no, we're in the third period of that game, it looks like, They're just updating it. Score is having a very hard time right now. It's currently jumping around, so we'll check back in on that when we've got a clearer sense of what the situation is. Again, 4-2, Delaware leads Port Huron. This game, 5-1, Danbury leads Elmira. Binghamton and Columbus are tied up at one goal apiece. Motor City leads Carolina 5-1. to one. And that looks like it has settled. Okay, so it is two to one in favor of the Mississippi Seawolves. A good night for our friends from Biloxi. Let's give you a quick rundown on the games, on these scorers. Danbury took a lead pretty early on in the game. A minute 19 in, Kyle Gonzalez opened the scoring. Johnny Ruiz and Daniel McKittrick with the assist on Gonzalez's goal. Lucas De Benedette with a goal assisted by Michael Marchesson. At the 513 mark of the frame, and late on in the period, Johnny Ruiz with the penalty shot goal. Luke Richards with the only Elmira tally so far of the evening. Michael Marchesson answered with another goal, his second point of the evening. Jared Yao and Lucas De Benedette with the assists. And Evan Lugo, the shorthanded goal. Johnny Ruiz with the assist. And that is how we are at our point right now. 5-1. Myra Mammoth looking to try and dig themselves out of a Pretty significant hole, the Danbury Hattricks. Aiming to nail this down, improve to 31, six and five would be their record if they hold on to or expand this score. Brian Wilson has stopped 23 of 24 shots that he has faced. Multiple points this evening for a couple of Danbury hat tricks. Johnny Ruiz with three points, Lucas De Benedette, and Michael Marchesson also with two points each. A goal and an assist for those two. Single assist for Jared Yao and Daniel McKittrick and single goals for Kyle Gonzalez and Evan Lugo. So here we go. De Benedette will step on the dot and try to win it cleanly. Elmira will get to it and instead. The puck is dropped. We are underway for the Danbury Ice Arena. Wilson will leave it alone for Xavier Abdella. Goes down. Richards threw it across the crease. Got underneath Wilson. Shot blocked. Palanga threw it ahead. Got underneath and tipped to Benedette's stick. Marchesson tried to throw it in front. De Benedette spins. Marchesson's stick cracked. That's why he's heading off to the bench. Flung down for De Benedette by Jared Yao. Wooley jumping on. Mammoth will try and get themselves out of their own end. Bouncing puck. 
Wooley spins, tries to get through some traffic. Wooley will put it on net. Dolinskis waits, hard check. Wooley will whack this in. Kuznetsov will try and sprint his way deep. Kuznetsov sitting on 19 goals. Trying to join the Danbury Hattricks list of 20 goal scorers, which currently is three players long. Johnny Ruiz, Dustin Gesso. Remember the goal earlier on today, Michael Marchesson, as that's right on Wilson. Gonzalez, fans on the exit. Still got it up to Borshev. And Kittrick will flip it up. 18, 20 the time of remaining here in the third. Skied across. Gullo, it's room to glide in at the top of the circle. Threw it around for Jelenskis. His nets off, couldn't get this out. Wilson will just smartly put his mitt on top of the puck. Man, take the stoppage of play a little under two minutes in to the frame. These teams will be going at it at First Arena in the Southern Tier of New York tomorrow. Ratcliffe threw it across for McKittrick, who will work it on deep. Danbury trying to sew up a 6-0 stretch against the Mammoth. 6.35, the puck drop tomorrow evening in Elmira. On the road, the next three games are going to be in Watertown against the Wolves. Next time the Danbury Hattricks come back home, they will be honoring some favorite players and welcoming some old friends into the Danbury Hockey Ring of Honor, which currently has five members. The initial class last season, Jim and AJ Galante, Dave McIsaac, Nick Neidert, Neidert, excuse me, and Matt Caranchi. All inducted and welcomed in to the Ring of Honor. Radcliffe tries to settle this at the uh, offensive end of the rink for the hat tricks. Settled down by Rod Rieg. Takes a few bounces to Benedette. Walks in, looks for it on net, from there. It'll be alumni night. Man is down, Rodrigue trying to cover it. Where's the puck? Rodrigue finally gets his back end over top of it. The three guys going into the Danbury Hockey Ring of Honor, all, all favorites here. Ed Campbell played for the Danbury Trashers and the Danbury Whalers was the captain of the 2013 Whalers championship team. Steve Brown, who played for the Whalers, the Titans, and the Hattricks, and serves as an assistant coach for the Danbury Hattricks. Looks for the shot on, and Benedette had the tip. It's a nice looking tip. Brown, again, a member of that 13 championship team. So far, the only pro hockey championship won by any team here in this arena in Danbury, Connecticut. And Alan Friedman, who's an executive with the Danbury Hattricks, took care of an awful lot of the things that pro teams just need to do and did them extremely effectively and well. Sits behind the apron of the goal. Benedette couldn't work it free. On comes Jelenskis. Sprints in. McDonald. Marchesson lays his check. Jelenskis. Has some room to work with. Spins, look, shot, shoulder save by Brian Wilson. Marchesson wanted the pass forward for Falanga. Pitch forked up. Turnover, McGuire. Denied anything further. Abdella with the check to knock it down. Pass ahead to Falanga. They'll give it on backwards for Johnny Mack.
Borshev through some traffic. Uli lob this deep. Rod Reed will settle it, leave it for his defenseman to catch up. Blake Cudmore on to help him out. Cudmore has some room to work with. Dips around Wooley. Leeson and Wilson. Flipped up for Jared Yao. Into the blue line, blocked down. Good check. Wooley will spring Kuznetsov. One man to get by. Kuznetsov at the circle. Thrown in. Off the end boards a little bit too high. As we're beyond the five minute mark gone by. Slot shot. Trickles a little bit wide. Borshev had the right idea. Nikitrick will put this up for Yao. Throws it on net. It finds its way wide. I would love to see a shot chart and see just how many shots Danbury has attempted throughout the course of the evening. Gonzalez turned it over. Golo couldn't receive the pass cleanly from Noah Wild. Gonzalez trying to recover up for Lugo. McKittrick, there for it as well. Whacked on deep, Wilson. Gonzalez will run it. Gonzalez some room to run free. We'll backhand this one on. Sits on the apron of the goal. Kicks off McKittrick. Tristan Mock takes the check from J-Mac. Pass forward from Dowler to Lugo. McKittrick will spin. Glide in. McKittrick gave it on backwards. Left hand shot, save made by Johnny McDonald. To the slot, Radcliffe the shot, had it blocked. High off the glass. We'll work it deep for Lugo. On for McKittrick, has to work through some traffic. Lugo goes down, McKittrick on his feet. Lugo tied up, holds his man Radcliffe. On to work this up, taken away by Justin Schmidt, McDonald. Pull it on for Schmidt. McDonald will regroup. Marchesson in, looks, shot. A nice glove hand save by Danik Rodrigue. First media timeout of the third period. Quick pause back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the glove. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. JJ Stacks, do you want food and fun? Now go have a chat with our friends at JJ Stacks in Brookfield. They feature burgers, wings, shakes, ice cream, and mini golf. Check out the menu and spoil yourself. Take a trip down Federal Road and stack it. 5-1, Danbury in the lead. They flipped the shot counter, 32-25 the hat tricks have taken command of the shot listing. One to the point, Abdella. Jared Yao from a kit trick at the circle. Do a stick check, Rodrigue is down. Basically on a knee, walks it in front. Loose puck at the top of the slot. Rodrigue was sprawled out. They're very fortunate that Danbury did not control that very well in the crease. Otherwise that could have, it really should have been a much worse situation for the Elmira goalkeeper. On they go. Abdella shoves McGuire off the puck. Now forward for Marchesson. Two points for Marchesson this evening. Ahead for Falanga. High stick by Marchesson. He'll play it. The officials have to blow that dead. Twelve thirty-two. the time remaining. 6.35 is puck drop tomorrow evening. In Elmira between these two teams. Hat tricks. Will be returning home for a matchup against the 
And on the road to face the Watertown Wolves as they nearly turn this over. Wooley will just have to control it and fight it a bit. Watertown actually comes here on the 18th. Springs through, wanted to throw it across, did Johnny McDonald, who's net saw. Nothing there. Leeson will spring over to the loose puck. They're playing the Watertown Wolves the next four games in a row. Three of them in Watertown, the economic hub of the North Country. They'll host the Wolves, the defending Commissioner's Cup champions, on the 18th, Saturday the 18th, day after St. Patrick's Day. They're wearing specially designed jerseys for that game, honoring the 2013 Danbury Whalers, who won the Commissioner's Cup. Kuznetsov trying to help and get this free. Borshev taking the worst of it. Borshev tied up with Jim Jensen. Takes a bounce, Dowler controls it, put it on net, caught the pipe. That caught the post. McKittrick again in the middle of this. Jensen ducks out of a Kuznetsov check. 10.54 the time remaining. At the goal line, Richards. Across the red line, he'll lob it deep and go chase it. Wilson, bring it around the dasher off his backhand. Dowler lays a shoulder check, shot sailed high. At the top of the circle, McKittrick shot on, sticked away by Wilson. Dowler has some room. Dowler forward for Daniel McKittrick. Radcliffe. Spins and holds it. We're coming up on 10.25 left to go. Dowler the shot. Lose puck. Lugo couldn't get a clean handle on it. Yao. Underneath a few guys. McKittrick will give it off for Radcliffe. McKittrick brings it on. High block on the save. Radcliffe, the puck gets under him. Lugo. Ring it. Shot. Sailed high. Marsha Son knocks his man down. Radcliffe gains to funnel it on. Marsha Son overskated the possession. Had the right idea, just overskated the play a little bit. This will not turn into an icing. The puck ran through a couple of outstretched Danbury sticks. So only for that is going to be that they had a chance to play it. Buck under Yao's stick. Jared Yao. Pass ahead wanted Falanga. Yao glides in. Jared Yao some room. Flipped up. Falanga absorbs the body contact. Ahead from Marcia Song. Abdella will whack this deep. Abdella will flip it forward for Lucas de Benedet. Wooley gliding in. Couldn't thread it through for Wooley. 8.45 the time remaining. At the under 10 media timeout when the next whistle that isn't a goal sounds. A pretty sedate third period between these teams to this point. Leeson to the circle. Borshev around for Wooley. His friends and family here too. Cheer him on. Two on one, Borshev and Kuznetsov. Had the trailer, threw it across. Borshev maybe took a minute, took a second too long, deciding where to go with it. Leeson will lob it. Golo giving chase, wrestling with Yao for possession. Yao will win it. Borshev takes the stick check, keeps on trucking. Puck rolls to the circle. Kuznetsov there for it. We've got a whistle away from the puck, and what are we going to have? That going to be a penalty against. It's Leeson who's hopping off. We're at the under 10. We'll take a breather, come back in a little bit from the Danbury. Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel.
from our friends at Mitchell. Experience the difference. Mitchell, since 1945, we've been serving the community, heating, oil, propane, and service for your home or business. Mitchell is ready to serve. Tate Leeson sits for an infraction, two minute minor. So Danbury to the power play. Gonzalez winds up, blasts it, and Rodrigue will swallow the shot. 13 seconds gone by on the man advantage. Buckle bounce its way out. Danbury has been incredibly successful on the penalty kill over the last couple of games. And let's see if they can be successful on the power play. Ruiz forward off of Marshasson's skate. It's the accidental Bruins fan coming out in me. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Tate Leeson. Shot, save made. Marshasson will settle it. That's it. Gonzalez winds up shot. McDonald, the ripper. Ruiz will work it low. McKittrick turns, shot, not there. Marsha Son off for Ruiz. Gonzalez, room to work with. Shot floated up and straight down off the glass. Ruiz will control it, has to play it back out in neutral space. Balls down, loose puck. Richards on it. Gonzalez took a whack at it. Ruiz will fling it. Falanga. To the dot, 30 seconds of power play time left. Jared Yao will glide in. Ben Dett waits at the blue line. Yao. The chant is diamond hands. Daniel Amesbury not here tonight. He is taking part in the up and rowdy event in Charleston, West Virginia. His nets off shot sails wide. Penalty comes to a conclusion. Yao with the blast, shot, kick, save. Belanga gets over to play this one. Jared Yao, dive in, whack it around. To Benedette, looking to get to it at the opposite half boards, does. Lost the possession to McGuire. Good poke check, and the Mammoth are off sides. Belanga takes a check from Gullo. Dallow will run this out. Five minutes left to go and a two on one chance for the Mammoth. Richards, Lugo catches up for the defense. Richards sails the shot wide. Cudmore settles it at the point. Thrown across. Looks on, blocker save. The whistle sounds with 4.46 left. Did they play that offsides or I'm a little confused as to how this is getting ruled. We're at the under five, so we'll take one last pause. Come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattrix YouTube channel. It's the spirit of hard work. The Badgers of Litchfield Distillery in honor of the early farmers of Northwest Connecticut present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. Grab it at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the Danbury Hatchers. It'll be interesting to see who 
gets the opportunity to lift the barrel when this game comes to its conclusion. Face off won by the Mammoth. Wilson out to try and settle this down. Gonzalez looking for an exit. Donald tried to sneak it. Uli took a whack at it. Uli across for Lugo. Offsides called. A little quick. Jumping across the line was Lugo. Clean face-off win by De Benedet. Benga tries to settle this win there. Across De Benedet in alone. De Benedet sails the shot a little bit wide. Played up to the line, shot fluttered off the glass. We're under four minutes to play in regulation time. Abdella tried to funnel it on towards the net. Moving in with some room and lobbing the shot blocked by Jared Yao. Tried to fly this out, Marshasan will sprint. He won't win the race to this puck. No icing as well, so a little bit of a win for Danbury. Blanga, settle and fly it. Out of play. Three twenty-nine. The time remaining. Kids enjoying themselves and taking home a souvenir. Hockey's a participation sport. You come to a game, you gotta have your head up and be ready for anything. Puck sneaks underneath the outstretched stick of Tyson Lambord. Igor Borshev trying to win it. Sprinting ahead. 305 remaining to be played. Dallar tries to work it up for Kuznetsov. Wooley settles it. Wooley in. Wooley in. Shot save made. And a penalty taken by the Mammoth. This is going to be a slashing penalty. This was before, really, the breakaway opportunity. So this isn't going to result in a penalty shot. This will be a simple power play look. Rodrigue has played an excellent game since coming on in relief. He's going to have to be good again. This is the drive. Slashing came in right as the shot was going off. So again, no penalty shot, just a simple two minute man advantage for the hat tricks. McDonald looks for the shot. Ruiz the blast and it's blocked. Gonzalez will knock it down at the blue line. It's a slashing infraction. Golo, the man who's sitting Flown sky high into the 200 seating section. A minute 35 of power play time left to go. He's on the dot, he'll win it cleanly. Marshallson tries to work it free. Louise. The kit trick. Hold it, look for it across McDonald. In front off of Marshallson and had the right idea, couldn't finish it off. Gonzalez to McDonald at the right dot. Louise catches his stick kind of awkwardly. Kit trick. Louise. Some room. Two minutes left. Louise shot, knocked upstairs. Danbury will throw the second power play unit on the ice. <laughs> De 
to Benedette with a clean faceoff win. Radcliffe holds it, looks. 53 seconds of power play time left. Yao to Kuznetsov. Swab spots across the circle for Radcliffe. Out of the attacking end. Coming up on the last minute of regulation time. Yao glides in. Yao goes down, flown out. Radcliffe tried to kick it and settle it. In alone to Benedette, sails the shot too high. Down to the last minute of regulation time, and the penalty has expired. Danbury, an impressive home win as they control the last couple of seconds well. Dowler for Marsha Son. Wanted it for Lugo. He'll control it. Dowler. And we'll give it back to Lugo. Xavier Abdella will just hold it behind the net, and that seems increasingly likely to be that. The Danbury hat tricks pour it on early, hold well defensively late on in the game as Abdella takes that check. Final couple of seconds will burn off as Lugo looks maybe for one more. They won't be able to get it cleanly. Dowler will shoot it. Rodrigue came on in relief, it's not enough. That's it, the Danbury Hattricks have won a 5-1 final. Over the Elmira Mammoth, a pair of short-handed goals stakes the Hattricks to a win, their 31st of the season. A wonderful performance. We'll see who gets to lift the Litchfield Distillery's barrel. Let's see who gets it. Kyle Gonzalez scored a pretty goal early on. Gonzalez gets to lift the barrel. He'll spin it. And that's that. A 5-1 final. Billy McCreary's squad will get a warm send off from the fans here at the Danbury Ice Arena. We've got our three stars of the game on the way. An impressive final. They'll be going off to cheer their friend Daniel Amesbury after this in the Axe Tricks Lounge. Been during all the games with axe throwing. A great way to spend your intermission time, a great way to spend your evening with us here at the Danbury Ice Arena in the Axe Tricks Throwing Lounge and Bar. Stays open after the game is all done, so come on, enjoy a great hockey game. Kick back on some tricks. Now, the three stars of the game. Tonight's third star from the 
It's Marsha Son who gets the number three star. A goal and an assist. His goal shorthanded. Marsha Son. Another good night for him. Here's the number two star. A goal and two assists. The captain, Johnny Ruiz. Seven points in his last two games. And the number one star. 26 saves on 27 shots faced. Continues to be arguably the best goaltender in the FPHL. Has played more minutes than anybody in the league. Has been consistent and has performed beautifully well in net. Danbury's on the road the next couple of games. They'll be in Elmira tomorrow, in Watertown next weekend, in Watertown next Friday, and back home on the 18th when the new inductees to the Danbury Hockey Ring of Honor will join the 2022 class. It'll be Steve Brown, Ed Campbell, and Alan Friedman who will join the Five people already up there. Jim Galanti, AJ Galanti, Dave McIsaac, Nick Niedert, and Matt Caranchi. We'll get some new friends and all deserving members of that 2013 championship Danbury Whalers team. And that's it for everybody here with the Danbury Hat Tricks. I'm Chris Lynch. We hope you have enjoyed your time with us this evening. Be warm, be well, wherever you may be. We'll see you back here on the 8th of March, the day after St. Patrick's Day for Alumni Day here at the Danbury Ice Arena.